and welcome into another edition of It's Tyler Digger. We appreciate you watching us. We're on four or five times during the week, and we always try to have a, a guest that you would enjoy watching. Uh, if in case you're watching for the first time, It's Tyler Digger is a program designed to talk about all the positive things going on in and around Tyler Digger, a city that's open for business, and a lot of good things have been happening in, in and around our city. Uh, we're honored today to have a uh, special guest, a young man, 18. He'll be 19 in August. Just a young young man. Uh, I'm an old man. He's a young man. But it's indeed to have uh, uh, Mr. Bradley Bates with us. Good to be here. I've uh, been knowing, I know Bradley. Watched him grow up, he and his brother Brandon. They're the uh, sons of Glenn and Pamela Bates. Of course, a lot of you may not know them as such, but uh, Glenn is the son of Horace and Dorothy Bates. Horace was around town forever. He was a Pepsi Cola man for many, many years. Then he went to work for Tyler Beverage, and then he went to work for Veolia. Horace had a farm out on 77, and uh, he and, and Glenn were always my campaigners when I was running for mayor or whatever I ran for. You could always count on Mr. Horace and, and Glenn to be there helping me campaign. Of course, uh, Miss uh, Pamela, Brandon's, uh, excuse me, Bradley's mother is the daughter of uh, uh, Randall and uh, Brenda mm -hmm. Lolly. That's right. And then they are the offspring of Horace Miller. So we go way, way, way back. Horace was big in gospel music. Of course, Randall Lawley had a singing group for many years. And then he was a disc jockey on several radio stations throughout the area. So that gives you a little bit of background of, of Mr. Bradley Bates from good stock. Uh, I will say this, during his daddy was the only son of the family. He had, you say, seven sisters? Seven sisters. So there was eight of them, Horace and, uh, and uh, Dorothy, Dot, Miss Dot, had eight children. None of them missed a day of school. All eight children went every day to school. All their high, elementary through high school never missed a day. Quite a, quite a record, quite an honor. And that speaks well for the Bates family. Brand, Bradley has done just about as well. Uh, he's homeschooled, and he don't miss any time from school. He's always right there in school. He, he, yeah. he can't get away from school. That's right. <laughs> Sleeps it and eats it. And that's, that's right, Larry. That's right. <laughs> it's, it's indeed an honor to have you with us, Bradley. Well, it's nice to be here, Larry. Good. Thank you for having me on here. We, uh, we, we basically got the background on, on Bradley. Uh, he is a uh, homeschooler, graduated. Doing great, uh, but he's into trains. He's fascinated by trains. And we thought it would be good to have Bradley on here. Let's talk about his, I guess, I don't know what it be, your hobby or your passion or I'm not, maybe a little bit of both? Yeah, a little bit of both. That's what I'd say. Um, you know, it, what I do is called rail fanning. And what rail fanning is, is basically where you go out and you photograph trains. Um, it, it can be called many other things. It can be called just watching trains or ch even in some cases chasing trains. The way I like to do it, you know, you go out, it's all about the next best photo. Um, so, you know, you go out here, you catch a train you like, you chase it down, you get some shots of it. And another thing that I like to do is I like to get you know, the best sunlighting, of course. Try to get that next best shot. Always shoot with the sun behind you. But it, it's really fun. And, you know, a lot of people, they're like, well, you know, why do you do it? Well, main reason I do it is, number one, I like it. And number two is I submit these photos to magazines, books, publishing companies, etc., and also upload them to uh, railroad sites on the internet. So it's, you know, it's really fun just to get out there and watch some trains go by and get some photos and videos. Have you ever ridden on any of these trains that you? I have ridden on a couple. Believe it or not, I've not ridden on that many. I, I always like to get out here and chase them down and take photos of them. I think uh, one of our engineers in the studio, Robert, is the rider he rides a train yeah yeah uh, i've always been fascinated with trains uh, i've not ridden on one since probably 
mid forties. I remember riding on one going, I guess it went to Georgia. That was the old locomotive. Oh yeah, the steam locomotive. Steam locomotive. Chugging up the hill. And you know that that's something else is they've got um they've got the steam program coming back that uh Norfolk Southern's starting to do. They've got um N and W six eleven that's running up in Virginia. They've got forty five oh one, which is an old southern locomotive, that's doing the excursions in the southeast. And they've got a few others, you know, that's running around and the ones that, you know, forty five oh one and six thirty and all them, they're running up in the T V R M up in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Folks, he's talking stuff, but I don't have a clue what he's talking about. A lot of people don't. <laughs> I asked him when we were talking about being on our, on our show here and talking about trains. I said, can you talk 30 minutes about trains? He said, I think so. Well, and I asked problem. him, Daddy, I said, now, D uh, Glenn, can uh, Bradley talk 30 minutes? He said, Larry, he can talk till God comes back <laughs> about trains. He said he loves trains, and he's a master at everything he talked about on this stuff. And I'm just impressed already with stuff. He's talking about stuff I ain't never heard of, folks, you know. Some of these call letters he's doing, some of these whatever. We do well, once good. you once you get into it, you know, you tend to learn different stuff about it and you when I first started this, I, I didn't know, you How know. How old were you when you when you really got into oh, it? Oh Lord, I was I've liked trains all my life, but now I didn't start actually taking photos until October of 2010. About five years almost. But when I was little, um, me and my granddad, we would always go down to downtown Talladega. How about we, Randall? Yeah, Randall. Yeah. We would go down there and just, you know, watch trains go by. And to me, you know, train was a train. And then in 2010, you know, it started getting to where I got more into it, wanted to take photographs and videos and, I took a trip to Birmingham and, you know, I thought I was the only one that ever did this. And come to find out, there is a lot of people that does what I do, thousands of people. I mean, I've been on, well, such as these steam engines that I was just talking about, you know, I have to chase them and it just be bumper to bumper traffic. I mean, it, there's so many people out there trying to get their shots. And, and when you say chase, well, I think of chasing, that's someone going up the road, and you chase them trying to catch him. That That's about right, and, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, that's dangerous. Well... So you actually going up the road right, after yeah, the train. Getting ahead, right, getting ahead of it and getting, you know, the next shot. But, you know, like I was saying, a lot of people, you know, they say, well, ain't that kind of dangerous? Well, no, it depends on the way you do it. If you get out there and act stupid, of course it's dangerous, just like anything else. But... With most trains, you know, you can keep up with them without, you know, exceeding the speed limit or anything. So, I mean, it's not, you know, no, I, I wouldn't, if you do it right, it's, it's not dangerous. Folks, when you, and, and, and I'm, I'm just making this up, but when he really got interested in trains, when he got up a little bit older, and you sat in Talladega for an hour and a half waiting for the track to clear, you get a good shot of every car, all 200 of them. And by the time that train gets through and you go to the next set of tracks, there's that other train going in a different direction. So he really got, got interested in the train. That, that's right. That's partially correct. Uh, that's about right. You sit there and count them. One, two. Yep. And if you're in a hurry, there might be 400. There ain't that many cars, but there's, there's a bunch of them. Most, uh, a typical, you know, regular freight train normally has anywhere between 65 and 100 cars. Some cases you'll have 150 cars. Some like locals you might not have, but just a few, you know, like five or 10 or, you know, something like that. But, you know, like I said, I, I have a few photos. To... We'll, we'll, we'll show in just a second, but have you ever done a cost analysis of what, what it costs for a train to take a product from point A to point B compared to a tractor trailer or... I have not. Now, I will, let me just say. I just want to be more expensive on a train than it is by. Well, it, it is. Cheaper but, by train. But I will say, you know, if it was not for the railroad, and, you know, a lot of people, you know, they complain about, you know, getting stuck with, by them, you know, at crossings and stuff. But if it was not for the railroad and for 
trains, you know, look at all the 18 wheelers you'd have on the roadway, you yeah. know? And so, I mean, you know, if it was, railroad helps out tremendously across this country. I can't share with the people, and it, I wasn't going to talk about it, but it just come to mind. Uh, if it were in a few days or a few weeks, a few months, uh, there's going to be a facility built in Talladega that Honda will be transferring their cars from the mm -hmm. Honda to Talladega to this loading deck, loading dock, putting them on the cars, train cars in Talladega, and shipping them all over the world, even to the uh, docks, and then they'll be put on a ship there and shipped to wherever they're going. Right. And I, that's what you just said, there'd be so many trucks. So by transferring them to one location, loading them on the train, you're it's, getting all this traffic off the interstate. Right. That's yeah. right. Because, uh, you know, you can have, a train can haul, gosh, several a lot of vehicles, yeah. several of them. I mean, I can't, you know, guess at how many, but no, it can haul a lot compared to, you know, one truck. I mean, that can add up to a lot of trucks. Have you, uh, and folks, we've not discussed what we're going to talk about. Uh, you know, on this program, whatever comes up, comes out. Have you done any research uh, as, as a young man coming up, school, homeschooling, so about the railroad, how they become, people got involved in them hundreds of years ago? Believe it or not. I, you know, I have a little bit, but not, not that much. You're just fascinated by the train. Right. Not yeah. necessarily the history of it. Right. We got some pictures we want to show them. We'll let him explain to them. Mr. Engineer, if you can, uh, okay, talk this, about this. This photo here was made back on November the 10th of 2014. This was taken in Blue Springs, Tennessee. This train here, I'd got a heads up on it that morning. Now, a lot of people, you know, they're just gonna say, well, that's just a train. But actually, that lead locomotive that's right there is a Canadian Pacific SD90 Mac. Believe it or not, those are pretty rare. You know, they, there used to be a lot of them up in the Canadian areas, but within the past few years, there's only like, you know, four of them running around. And now, you know, I don't. I, I don't think there's any, just since I took that photo, I think even that motor there has been taken out of service. So, you know, I was able to get up and go after that up in Tennessee and through Georgia that morning and now, wound up with a lot of great shots. And were you chasing this train itself or you just were able to get the picture? I was, I was chasing this myself. Well, I was, I was actually chasing this with a friend of mine, Josh Putman, and uh, me and him, had a really good time out there chasing it. And this is where? This here, this particular photo was made in Blue Springs, Tennessee. That's basically on the Tennessee and Georgia border. And, you know, like I said, we, we started our chase right there. That was one of our first shots. And I think we ended the chase later that afternoon somewhere around down near Sugar Valley, Georgia. Let's go to another, another frame. Okay. Now, this photo here, this was made in the countryside of Brookside, Alabama. Brookside is just northwest of Birmingham. And that that was a uh, Norfolk Southern coal train that was on its way to Sheffield and then eventually on to uh, the plant side in Wyoming. You said a coal train? Right, coal train. Um, that lead locomotive right there, that is a, a CREX ES44AC locomotive. That was made in uh, December of 2014. I'm, I want to say that was made December the 9th. Can't be for sure about the date, but we can go to the next photo. Okay. Now this here, pretty train there, pretty. This was made in downtown Talladega. All right. This was. I see the hospital up on the hill yonder. Yeah. This here, those two first two locomotives right there are actually from the Florida East Coast Railway that runs from Jacksonville, Florida, down to Miami. They got, what happened was the Florida East Coast FEC, they got brand new locomotives. And so they got rid of their existing locomotives that they had, such as these two right here, and they, they leased them out to CSX. Well, this was made February the 10th of this year. And you know, I got, again, I got a heads up on it that morning and I was able to get out and get 
shots of it between Talladega and there, Birmingham. There's another shot there. And that shot there, that is down in a place called, little bitty place down just past Renfro called St. Ives. It's out there in a field. And that, that's up the side. So you train. followed the train or chased the train all the way down to St. Ives. Right. Yeah. We, I, I think the furthest that I've chased a train before is probably 105 miles. I've chased all the way from Birmingham to Atlanta, Atlanta to Chattanooga, I've ch all over the southeast, and eventually, as time goes on, I'm hoping to go all over America with it, doing what I do. You're obsessed with trains. I, it <laughs> is my life. It's my passion. Do you have any ambition to work with the railroad at some point in time? Or? I do. I'm, I'm hoping to get on. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to start putting in applications pretty soon. That's great. You'll be, you'll be 18, you'll be 19 in August. Right. Okay, uh, a couple of questions before we go. To, we got some more. Do you know what a top speed of one of these trains? Top speed for a freight on the main line is 50 miles per hour. And how many cars would they be putting at this, this speed? It could be anywhere from one to a hundred. This is why people need to be very careful when That's, they pull on the track, that train can't stop on a dime. Yes, you know, a lot of people think, well, you know, the gates are down, lights are flashing. Trains up the track, you know, they don't realize that, you know, that train's moving faster than you think. And, you know, before pulling out onto them tracks, you know, just watch yourself, you know, make sure if the lights are flashing and the gates are down, stop. Don't, don't go around, don't try to beat the train. And that's one thing, you know, that everybody's encouraging, especially the railroads and rail fans. I've often been fascinated by how did that train stay on that little bitty track? I, I guess the weight holds it in place. To well, it's that, I know it's but if you, if you look at the, the wheels of the freight cars, there's a little bitty lip that's on the inside of that rail. There's one on the inside and one on the outside, and it holds it on the track. Hmm. That's how they stay on. Also fascinated about how they pass each other. Yeah. Um, uh, we got one coming this way and then another, and, they, and they, somewhere or another they cross. And yeah, the way they do that, that's called a passing siding. That's where, like, say, for example, you've got a southbound and a northbound. One, whichever one's first, will pull into the siding. And then the other one will pass by. and they. Yeah, but when you've got 100 cars... Some of the, you better get out of Dodge quick if that other train's coming. <laughs> well, the other, you know, that they, they use this thing called signals, and you know they'll, you know, the crews can stop the train if need be. And in most cases, you know, when they meet a train, one will have to stop and wait on the other one to pass by. But in most cases, sidings can be two miles long. So I mean, it can easily hold a hundred car freight yeah. train. Yeah, I guess so. so. Some's different than others. Some, you know, are two miles long. Some might not be, but half a mile long. Just depends on where where the siding is actually located. What uh, on chasing trains? Folks, this is my first experience, so I don't have any idea what I'm going to ask. And I know about that much about trains, other than just what they look like. And I rode one once. Uh, how did? What kind of camera do you use to chase these trains with? Well, when I first started. I had a little point and shoot Fuji film. I can't even, I couldn't tell you what kind of camera it was, but that's what I had when I first started back in 2010. Around the first of 2011, I got my first professional camera. I got a, a Canon T2i. I used that camera up until about a month ago, and I bought me a Canon T5. So that's the one that I'm using now, but no, that's that's what I use, and then for I use about the same thing for videos. When I, not that I do video much, but when I do, that's what I use. Now, I notice the trains that you got while I go there in the distance looks like it could be uh, several hundred feet. Yeah, that that first that, photo. That's a good picture. Yeah, that first photo I showed. You know, we was we was trying to get ahead of it, and we was already ahead of it a little bit. And my friend that I was there with. There we go. Yeah, my friend I was with, you you're, know. You're what, uh, 1,000, 1,500 feet, maybe better? Yeah. When, That's a pretty good shot. Yeah, when when my 
when we was riding down the road, my friend said, look at that, you know, we can get that field shot right there. And I was like, no, you know, that's going to be too far off. But he wanted to do it, so I said, okay. So we got out, and, you know, we took that shot, and I was like, I'm glad we did this. You, yeah. Your call definitely, definitely paid off. The train, the scenery is just the farm. It's oh, just it's, a beautiful It's shot. beautiful up there. You know, there's places that I've been this, gosh, it's so pretty. Up That'd there. be a, a shot. To, there's another one. That, that's going to be a good shot. That there. shot right there is, is on Highway 78 in Cook Springs, Alabama. Okay. That uh, shot, you, there's two ways to get up there. You can either climb it from the road, which I would not recommend. I never do. But there is a trail that somebody had actually cleared out that goes right up to the tracks. And that's that's the way you can go up to there. But that right there is definitely one of my favorite locations in Alabama to shoot. And what kind of train is this? That is a Norfolk Southern intermodal. It, that is a Dallas, Texas to Atlanta, Georgia train. Um, and it's powered by? The, the lead locomotive is a BNSF SD70 Ace. And then, of course, you got two. What's it powered by, steam? No, it's uh, powered oh, by diesel fuel. That's a dumb question. Diesel fuel. Diesel, not mm -hmm. coal. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's powered by diesel fuel. But that shot right there was taken uh, just about a month ago, I think June the 28th to be exact. Got another one. That shot, right. that I, shot right there was taken at the first of this month on July the seventh. That over oh, Riverside. Guess, guess where that is? Riverside. Right? You, you guessed it. How about that, that? That's coming right across the Coosa River there at Riverside. I recognize the old bridge. And you know, here here's something else that I'd like to point out. That lead locomotive right there. If you look on the side, it says Savannah and Atlanta on it. That is actually a Norfolk Southern locomotive, but it is a heritage unit. Norfolk Southern and Union Pacific did a thing called heritage units. What heritage units are is they're locomotives that were done in special, specially painted schemes for railroads that don't exist anymore or that was, you know, had something to do with that railroad. And Norfolk Southern did 20 of them, and Union Pacific did seven. Norfolk Southern actually just did three more, one for the uh, veterans. They did a veterans locomotive, and they did um, a first responders locomotive. And the first responders locomotive is actually up in Chattanooga right now for the, um, sitting there near the uh, cemetery where the Marines was uh, buried at. What about Amtrak? Do you ever chase an Amtrak? Amtrak is, that's that's difficult because Amtrak is one train that can actually move at 80 and 90 miles an hour. I, I would sure will give you a speeding ticket trying to keep up with them. Yeah, that's one that I don't <laughs> tend to chase. Now Amtrak, they've got a couple of heritage units that, and you know, I'll shoot them or take photos of them. But Amtrak is not a train that I really personally care about. Have you ever run across an old-fashioned uh, steam? Uh, I have. I coal, have. coal burner, I guess you would. Yeah, as a matter of fact, back in November, November the 10th, I went up to Tennessee. That they, they ran two of them together. TVRM did a thing. They ran them from Chattanooga, Tennessee to uh, Chickamauga, Georgia. I'm, I'm sorry, Somerville, Georgia. And uh, we was act we actually chased that all the way down to Somerville, and that was a fun chase because it was in the fall. Now, they have a, uh, I don't know if it's Calera, Clanton, or somewhere Calera. down there. They have the Hardy a, Dixie uh, Railroad yeah, Museum. Yeah. Never yes. got pictures of that or never been on one of those. That's, that's what I remember back in the old days of riding. Right. Uh, yeah, I've been down there. Um, I've got a few shots from down there. I actually don't have that many, but. Got some from down there. How many pictures would you say you have through the years of trains? And I can tell you right at 5,000. Just since 2010, I've taken about 5,000 photos. You're either going to have to get you an expensive job or Glenn's going to have to get him a side job. I'm going to have to do something because <laughs> now I will say, getting out here, you know, it chasing trains like this, it gets expensive in gas and, you know, car repairs, of course. Marry a rich woman. There you go. <laughs>
That's right. What, uh, we got another three or four minutes. Uh, man, this is going fast. I'm, I'm impressed with uh, your, uh, uh, Glenn was right. I believe you could talk to God came back I, about trains. I could. I probably could. <laughs> I don't believe I've ever seen a young man with a passion of anything like uh, Bradley is. What, uh, and I'm asking some dumb questions, folks, because I don't know. And the only way I know how to find out an answer is ask someone that knows. Ask when, when a train wears out, can't be repaired no more like my Cadillac about there, what do they do with them? Well, depending on... You can't dig a hole and bury it, so... Well, believe it or not, in some cases, they do. That, just they out in the desert somewhere? Yeah, they, they'll just run them off a cliff, and then once it piles up, you know, they'll, they'll scrap it off. But in most cases, if a locomotive gets too worn out, they'll either replace the motor that's inside of it, or either they'll just take it to the scrapyard and scrap it. Are they building new engines every day? They, as a matter of fact, CSX, I couldn't tell you how many, but CSX just purchased a whole lot of brand new ES44 locomotives. Where are they building these trains? Do you know? I cannot answer that. Not a trick question, I, and I don't know. So. I, I'm wanting to say, I, you know. At one time, they had a plant somewhere in Alabama that made the, the wheels. Yeah, that that's in clear, too. Okay. That's actually still opened up. But, you know, where they build them at, you know, that's, I'm not sure that I can answer that. It had to be a big factory. Oh, yeah. Oh, put, yeah. put one of them big gadgets in there and build it. Oh, yeah. I, have I'm, you ever been inside an engine in one of these big? Uh, I have. I've been inside a few of them. Ever ridden in, in the engine part? I have not ridden inside of an engine, but I've been inside a few of them. And, you know, I've. Like I said, you know, doing this, you know, I've made a lot of friends. I mean, just just to name off a few, you know, Josh Putman, Jason Deloach, Jeffrey Gordon, uh, Aaron Hambright, you know, all, all of them, you know, I, I've made a lot of good friends doing that. I remember back in the old days, that was way before your time, you could buy the, the trains made out of, uh, I guess, tin or whatever. Yeah, models. Now they got all these plastic yeah, they, cars they, and yeah, and you know that's something else. You know that that can be said or you know rail fanning is you know modeling you know layouts and stuff and actually you know modeling real towns in your own house. Yeah, I have a few friends that do that. You ever too. thought about going in business and setting up a train place and sell sell trains and all the memorabilia and everything? I have not. I don't. I'm not looking into it. You're, you're just more of a, an enthusiast. I'm, I'm more all about getting that be next best shot. Getting, you know, getting Running out the here, rails, phot the photographing train. them, getting the next best shot. That That's me. Folks, I've heard of folks chasing a, a bad weather, and I've heard of people chasing women. But chasing trains, <laughs> it takes and, you know, the that, That's what a lot of people say, but, you know, you would be surprised to how many people do. I'm fascinated. You know, I thought that I was the only one when I first started. And, man, there are so many people that do it. I mean, Bradley, I can't thank you enough for man, being with me today. Being here. I appreciate it. The time you. flew fast. Uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. Tune in next week for another edition of It's Tyler Digger. Got to go.